Hello everyone. Several things going on in the wake of the UN assembly where the war in Ukraine was one of the main topics and at the actual war. So as we talked about before, one of the main concerns in Ukraine is the war wariness among Ukraine's allies. For starters, I invite everybody to imagine how Ukrainians must be tired of this war. You think you're tired? Trust me, it's nothing like what they're experiencing. So here's the conversation that's happening right now. Both President Biden and Secretary of State Blinken um, have clearly uh, read the history of various world wars and um, are trying to explain to the rest of the world and to the U.S. government why continuing to support Ukraine is important uh, and why we cannot afford to repeat the same mistakes we've made during World War II, where there was some hesitation as to whether um, it was worth fighting Hitler. We all know how that turned out. Meanwhile, even while uh, Zelensky was at the UN Assembly and uh, uh, talking uh, to the U.S. lawmakers, there were numerous strikes, again, against civilian objects uh, within Ukraine, uh, including Kherson, Kiev, and Kharkiv. We talked about those yesterday. Canada has a large um, Ukrainian population, and so sentiments there are strong in favor of Ukraine. So that is good news. I'm glad they understand. Um, I'm sure a lot of uh, uh, Ukrainian Canadians um, have friends and family back in Ukraine, and so I'm sure that moves a lot of the uh, uh, public opinion on the subject. While we're talking about support, there's some concern about the UK, and um, I can tell you why. Uh, much like a lot of the uh, British people, I do not have a lot of sympathy for the Tories. However, my concern is that um, their opponents are basically taking up, um, taking up the same position that Americans had about providing aid to Britain during World War II. They're saying, you know, fueling uh, the war is what's going to happen if we provide more help to Ukraine. We should negotiate with Russians, blah, blah, blah. And so that is a concern. While most of my friends are British liberals, uh, the uh, <clears throat> Labour Party, I support Tories when it comes to the war in Ukraine. If you guys don't believe me, please read your own history and re read how hard it was for Britain to fight Nazis before America started providing help. Read about that. That is, that is beyond insane. What shows like Foil's War that shows um, a lot of what was happening at the time. I'm telling you, this is no time for pacifism. So let's break this down. Uh, Russia is complaining about Poland. Despite the fact that Poland and Ukraine are kind of at odds right now because of the uh, uh, grain debate and uh, Poland uh, being stuck between the rock and the hard place, on one hand wanting to help Ukraine against the common enemy, and on the other hand wanting to preserve its economy, even if it's as it's trying to take care of millions, literally millions, of Ukrainian refugees. So, despite that, uh, Kremlin sees Poland as a threat, describes it as an aggressive country, and... The signs are there. So this is the same rhetoric they were using shortly before the war in Ukraine. So EU and NATO, Poland is a member, both of you. So you'd better be watching and listening because this is serious. This is Russia laying down the groundwork 
to take aggressive actions against somebody, when they start ag accusing somebody else of being aggressive, that is a sign there something is going on. So I would be watching it carefully. So another part of that was the missile strikes uh, by the Ukrainian armed forces against the Black Sea Navy uh, headquarters. That is still going on. We now have photos, and again, you know, Russian media continues to lie about what is happening. Um, there are two stories, actually, about things happening in Russia. One is about an electrical outage in the city of Tula. You can look up where it is, you know, with respect to Ukraine. Uh, so apparently they've heard loud claps. They're reluctant to use the word explosions, which is probably what it was. And half of the city suddenly was left without power. They're now saying that rats must have gnawed away at the power cables. Clearly, people who wrote up that particular fake have never seen the industrial power cables used to uh, deliver electricity uh, commercially. Because they're thinking it's like, you know, the cable you use to plug your lamp into a socket. I seriously doubt the rats could have nodded that. Oh, and they said that the loud booms that were heard were just supersonic airplanes. Right. So in this particular case, this is in Crimea, in the uh, Sevastopol area. And again, they heard loud booms. And then there was a pillar of smoke. And now they're saying it's another grass fire. They're having a lot of grass fire issues lately. Finally, on a very somber note, um, there is an article uh, in actually multiple uh, sources. This one is on foreign affairs about Ukrainian children who were freed from Russian captivity coming to testify in at the International Criminal Court. Yeah, that's what a normal kid's life is. You know, wake up in the morning, go testify about the atrocities that were done to you by an invading army and how you were kidnapped to another country. Uh, I actually watched uh, BBC Ukraine a story about this. Unfortunately... It's in Ukrainian, and there are no English subtitles, so you can't watch it. Or maybe it is fortunate for you, because you will not have to watch this horror and fully comprehend what was going on there. Here is the deal. As of right now, nearly 20,000 children have been kidnapped. It's like 19,000 with some hundreds. And we only got back just over 300 even to get those back, extensive paperwork had to be assembled to prove that the children actually belong with their parents. And the parents, usually the mothers, because the fathers are either dead or at the front, had to go to Russia, go through the checkpoints, undergo multi-hour interrogations by FSB, which is Russia's current incarnation of the KGB, to get their children back. What is happening is unconscionable. That alone should be enough for the whole world to turn against Russia and strike it with everything they've got. 20,000 kids that we know of. Nobody should have to go through this in the 21st century. Have we learned nothing?